Hi. So, thank you very much. This is my uh, talk about Eat Attack, which uh, I was quite surprised to see uh, when I got involved with the project that actually a lot of people were using. Um, next. Right. Okay. So, first of all, I'll just talk, give a brief history of the project. Um, it's actually quite an old project. So it was originally written in around 2000 um, by Jerome Couder. Um It was pretty active. Uh, I mean, I, I started using it pretty early on. Um, it was, it's actually a, a tag editor for audio files. Originally it was like MP3 files. Um, and then it grew various other formats. So you can edit FLAC files, Vorbis files, these sort of things. Um, and it's supposed to be a relatively simple UI for just editing these tags. Um, it can do some pretty advanced things, like you can edit lots and lots of files all at once. You can edit a whole directory tree. Um, you can create play playlists from all the files that you've actually got open and viewed. Um, so it's, it's pretty good. Um, the only problem was that um, the original maintainer, he had less and less time to work on the project, so the releases started getting further and further apart. And then it was originally a, a GTK1 application. Porting it to GTK2, someone else did that work. It was never really a sort of a great port. It's just a really old project with lots of problems, you know, various things like just really old code. Um, there was no public revision control system. It was hosted on SourceForge, and there were just tables every now and again. Um, so it's a little bit unloved, I guess, towards the end. Um, it did have a mailing list, and there were quite a lot of people active on the mailing list, which was quite nice. So this is the the GTK1 UI from uh, version one. So this was, I think, 2000 or 2001, um, for the bad old days. GTK2 UI looked basically the same, actually. <laughs> I mean, the themes changed, but essentially, you've got the same thing there. Um, as you can see, it's pretty simple. We've got a, a, a browser here on the left for all the directories. In the middle, you've got the files. And then on the right-hand side, you've got the tags. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the only problem was, yeah, there were basically no releases from about 2008 or so. Um, there was a rejuvenation in activity. So actually, this uh, it all got moved into Git. Um, so there were some Git tags made from some tarball releases. Um, so unfortunately, there was no history for anything pre prior to what was there in 2008. Um, and for a time, this was pretty good. There were a couple of new releases. Um, but really, it was just some translation updates. Patches that people sent to the mailing list, they got merged. But apart from that, not a great deal really happened, unfortunately. Um, so I started getting interested because I would used EasyTag for years and years and years and wanted to contribute and thought, well, I can help the project. Um, unfortunately, there are some sort of outstanding big things like a GTK3 port that hadn't been merged. And someone had made a macOS export, which hadn't got merged. Um, they still haven't got merged, but they're a lot closer. Um, so I'm a GNOME contributor. I maintain Cheese and Vino and Vinagre and a few other things. Um, and I thought, well, it's a GTK application. It's written in C. It feels pretty gnome -y. Um How about we move it to gnome.org? Um, we have Git there. We've got Bugzilla. We've got various other things. It's just a much nicer place to host things than SourceForge. Uh, I have no plans to make it a gnome project. I don't think gnome needs a, an ID3 tagger, particularly. Um, but the infrastructure is there. Um, and uh, it was pretty straightforward to move everything across. And now it's all done. Um, I did all sorts of other new stuff as well, like there was a, this GTK3 port outstanding, but most of the GTK3 porting was actually just making it work with the latest GTK2. So I brought that all up to scratch, and uh, now we depend on GTK224. It's, it's all you know, compiled with no deprecated symbols. There was lots of code cleanup. It's now, in general, just a lot nicer. Um, the build system was pretty horrible. It was some really, really old, crafty auto tool stuff. And now it's lots of new, shiny auto tool stuff. Um, it's still auto tools, but it's at least vaguely readable. Um, there's experimental GTK3 support. Um, it's kind of a little bit ugly. You have to you know, redefine some things because GTK3 actually removes some widgets that were deprecated in GTK2. Um, but it looks pretty nice. Um, so the project was all moved. Another thing that I did was went through and actually went through all of the distribution packages and pulled all the patches that had just been sitting there that had maybe been filed upstream but not actually merged, 
I actually pulled those into easy tag properly. Um, so I don't think there's actually a single distro patch now um, that hasn't been upstreamed. Um, so that's a good thing. So they, those were the sort of small patches that have been accumulating for a few years. Um, there have been loads of other cleanups as well um, that I helped to do. Um, and because I actually moved everything and people started getting emails from the mailing list again, um, there's been some really good renewed activity on the mailing list. Um, so probably we had the same number of patches as there were in distro patches all over the different distributions, and those have all been merged too. Um, new website isn't online quite yet. I've just got to push that, which I'll probably do after the talk when I've got a little bit of time. Um, we've got loads of new translations. GNOME has a really active uh, translator community, so we've already got, uh, I think, 100% translations for Slovenian and Serbian. Um, and EasyTag has a lot of translatable strings. There are some really complex strings in the UI, so new translators, very much appreciated. So this is the, funnily enough, still GTK2 version. The GTK3 version looks almost exactly the same. Um, the UI has, still hasn't really changed very much. Um, but most of this work that I did was just porting it to use the latest code in GTK2. The GTK3 version is essentially the same. It's basically using a newer theme. There are a few changes, like there are some icons that have changed a little bit. We're sort of using more stock icons where we can. Um, one of the things that we really need to do is actually fix a lot of this UI because a lot of it's old and like it's using GTK frames. So actually those frames now, they're not even there. Um, they're not shown in modern themes. So we just need to go through the UI and get rid of those. Um, there are some kind of important lessons um, that you can learn from taking over a really old project like EasyTag. Um, and the first one is look before you hack. Um, I, in weekend, kind of went and did some hacking and thought, oh, yeah, I'll get it to compile with GTK3. Then looked at the mailing list and realized, actually, someone had already done that. And that hadn't been merged. It was just sitting in someone's branch on GitHub. It, it kind of bit rotted a little bit. Um, so I went through and after spending a weekend doing that myself, kind of tried to see if they did anything differently and it was roughly the same. They did it as kind of one big patch and I split it up into lots of little patches, but essentially it was the same. So if you're resurrecting something that's really old, just go through and try to find all of these things in the main list. Go like, you know, back a couple of years in the archive, see if you can find any cool things that someone's done and see if you can just work on getting those merged first. Um, close your eyes when looking over something really, really old. Um, EasyTag had so much, so much bad code. Um, there's still lots of bad code. There's still a problem with like handling of file names because when it was written, it was all assuming ISO 8859-1 encoding for file names. Now that's not really appropriate. We should probably be assuming UTF-8. Um, and there are so all, all other sort of assumptions. There was lots of dead code, so now compilers can actually help you a lot. So we fixed lots of compiler warnings and removed lots of dead code that was just sitting there just by using static keywords um, and simple things like that. Um, and every old project has a legacy. Um, EasyTag had quite a lot of that. I mean, there were distribution patches and there were lots of old legacy in terms of the UI and in terms of how things are done. There were lots of invalid assumptions. Um, so they're going to be fixed. But it's just a matter of time, really. Some future things that we'd like to do. Um, EasyTag doesn't really work if you mount a file system, say, like a SIFS file system, and then you want to actually, you know, access files and edit tags on, on, on a SIFS file system. You can't really do that because it's using all the POSIX uh, calls for opening files. Um, this made porting to Windows a little bit awkward, but it's, it kind of works. Um, it would be nice to use some nice abstractions that we have inside glib and GIO for that. Um, I've started doing that for a few things, like temporary files, and that's going to take a long while, but that would really help. Um, it currently has its own configuration file format because, hey, that was cool. Um, so we should change that too. Um, and glib, or GIO rather, now has G settings, which on Windows would store all of the uh, configuration data in the registry. So we should just use that. I've used it in a few other projects, and that's going to simplify the code a lot and cut out a huge chunk of settings code there. The file name encoding I've already talked about. Um, the UI stuff, again, we need to change. If we're going to do a proper GTK3 port, we need to actually maybe redesign some bits of the UI, not just for new widgets, but actually for things that don't really work so well in GTK3 or that are a bit different. Um, so, quite a bit to do there. And up to date user documentation. Currently, there's like a, a French HTML documentation thing and some German HTML documentation and some English stuff. None of it's properly translated using get text or anything like that. Um, we have a uh, Yelp in GNOME, which uses Mallard. So, we could move to something like that. I don't want to make it too GNOME, so I want to make sure that people who aren't using GNOME or have all the development stuff installed can still hack on it. Um, so, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do there. But it's going to be some improvements soon, I think. 
Um, one of the things it doesn't do uh, is actually getting a lot of metadata um, from online sources. It currently can fetch from CDDB, so like 3DB and, and GNUDB, um, but that's really old, horrible code that just creates the HTTP headers from concatenating some strings together. Um, not very nice code, not really very useful anymore um, because a lot of the actual metadata in those databases is not particularly good. Um, but Music Brains actually has a pretty good database and there's a, there's a couple of bugs open about actually adding Music Brains support. They have a library for doing this. Um, so that would be a really cool thing to do to be able to actually, um, if you've ripped a CD and you know you can match that up with a release that's in Music Brains, fetching all the metadata, putting that in the right place, um, just automating a lot more of this. Um, the hope with that is that then you can actually remove or at least hide from the default UI uh, a lot of the options um, because it's currently maybe a simple but it, it's still a little bit cluttered. It doesn't really fit on a netbook screen so when you think about how we can actually remove some of the stuff that's there um, and still make it useful. Um, a lot of the tag specifications have changed so like ID3 v2 has loads of tags. Flack doesn't have really very many tags. Flack and Vorbis, the tag spec there is, is kind of relatively restrictive for the default set. Um, and easy tag actually does the wrong thing according to the specification for a few of those. It still can write XMS Vorbis tags, which are, well, they are outdated 10 years ago. Um, but that's sort of in the process of being fixed. There are some patches on bugs able to fix those. Uh, and we can still keep some decent compatibility. Radically simplifying the UI um, and maybe doing some other cool GTK3 stuff would be really nice. But I want to get the GTK3, GTA2 stuff polished first. I don't want to leave all the people who are using GTK2 still out in the cold. Um, so in summary, it's now, through some of the work that I've done and uh, other people have contributed, a lot easier to contribute to. Um, the build system's simplified a lot. Um, the Windows support was dropped kind of when someone else took this over early last year. They didn't, there was never a release made. I've got a half-working NSI installer that I've cross-compiled, um, which I've tested and seems to work pretty well. So that's going to be there very soon. There's going to be a release coming very, very soon because the only thing blocking the release is a Windows installer now. Um, so that's pretty exciting. There'll actually be a release sort of a year after there was the previous release. So we're almost moving to a sort of time-based release cycle. Um, yeah, there's been loads of mailing list activity, which has been really fun. We've been getting lots of new patches from people who've never contributed to it before. Um, hopefully the distributions are going to really like us as we've merged all their patches. So, yeah, things are looking up. If you want something small to hack on, I mean, it's a big code base, but you can probably go in and fix something small. You know, if you tag some, ID, uh, some MP3 files and things, have a look at EasyTag and uh, let us know what you think. Thank you very much. There's a little bit of time for questions, but it's probably better to talk to me afterwards because I think, I mean, what, I've got like one minute maybe for questions, but <laughs> if anyone does have any questions, maybe not. I can't see any hands, so thank you very much.